Hello, I'm Tom Hardison, and today is January 8th, 2023. I want to share with you a path toward self-mastery, my story of discovery and growth through trading. Now, first I'll share a little bit of context about me, my trading intention and approach, the journey I've taken so far, the initial steps on the path to mastery, I'm just beginning, a professional assessment summary, and an assessment of my 2022 trades, uh, both day and swing, and uh, the thoughts I have on where I'm going to focus for 2023. And I'll share the biggest challenge I'm facing and what is helping me grow through that. So first, about me. Um, my grandparents are, come from Irish English, Dutch Nordic, Italian, and French and German. And they and their ancestors made their way from Europe to the East Coast, Massachusetts, Maine, New York, and then migrated to the Midwest, Ohio, Wisconsin, and then out to the West to California, where my parents were born and grew up uh, in a small farming community where all of my families had been building businesses, roads, dams, pipelines, farms, houses, and uh, cultivating leadership, building communities, providing ministry and teaching to support and facilitate the growth of, of people. I was born uh, in The Hague while my parents were going to school. My dad was going to school there. We lived in Europe for a little while and then came back to the U.S. And where we moved around is I traveled from his for his projects, building dams and pipelines. Uh, we ended up going to Venezuela when I was at the end of my high school years. And I came back to the U.S. to go to college and then uh, ended up uh, going to school in Spain and then back to the U.S. to start work at Eula Packard where I settled in Boise uh, 31 years ago. So I studied engineering and history before uh, I completed college, and those provided a foundation for me that led me into HP, where I spent 28 years helping grow businesses there with over 20 different roles. And today, what I'm focused on are five major areas my family and friends with my wife, four sons, daughter-in-law and grandson. I've got two siblings and their families, cousins and friends. I've been leadership and team coaching since leaving HP in 2013. Um, I've been practicing and training in Aikido since 2013 as a path to self-mastery. And in 2009, I began to dive into trading more extensively first with uh, Van Tharp and the Van Tharp Institute with books and self-study courses, and then meeting Ken Long when he was offering a day trading course through the Van Tharp Institute in 2019. And since then, pursuing additional learning with Ken and the tortoise community. So my focus and what I really get excited about is cultivating collective mastery to create better outcomes, both cultivating that mastery in myself, which is why I'm talking about self-mastery today and my journey on in that from a, a path of trading uh, and helping those around me do that as part of a community of practice. So uh, I'll share a little bit more about that as we go along. So my intentions in, in trading is I'm a discretionary trader. I view my edge as being able to choose when, where, and in what size to be in the market or out of the market. Uh, I'm I'm a small player in the whole scheme of things. So being discretionary and choosing what's going to be a good fit for me is where I believe I can get the best return for me and the way I can manage it. My focus is generating income and growing capital. I use two retirement accounts and one taxable account with no margin, so I don't trade options. Um, I trade long and inverse ETFs. 
on market and industry indices primarily. Uh, in bull markets, I will include specific stocks from leading indices that may be growing faster than the index. Um, and uh, I focus on day swing and blended monthly rebalancing positions from the systems I've been learning with Ken and, and the tortoise community. And in all of that, what I've really come to uh, with the help of my accountability partner is the most critical learning is about adapting what I'm learning from Ken and the tortoise community to me to what works for me, what's a system that I can execute in an effective way. And uh, this is the most challenging thing, is developing me as a complex adaptive organism to be able to execute effectively, to follow the core processes and the professional methods they can teach us. So let me share my trading journey so far. So my first idea for a trade was in 1977. I was 16. I'd been reading the newspaper and the business page. Um, I'd been helping manage uh, or document my parents' expenses for them on a, on a tablet, paper, journal, sheet, manually tabulating uh, where they were. And, and I said to my dad uh, at the time, dad, I think we should buy some gold. Um, at the time, it was trading at about $135 an ounce. And uh, over the next couple of years, it went to $600. Um, but I didn't know how to trade. I didn't have any capital. I didn't have an account. I didn't know how to execute trades. So uh, an idea, but no ability to put it into action. Now, going forward, uh, I graduated and started working at Hewlett Packard in 1984. So I began to put money into savings for retirement. And over time, I began to build up a small uh, discretionary account that I could begin to try to learn. Uh, but what I realized is, uh, if I look at the mastery book by George Leonard, um, I was dabbling. I was just trying things that thought it made sense. And uh, I really started that in the, the last half of the 1990s. Uh, I had some success, uh, luck, uh, but I bought some Cisco stock and uh, that did well before 2000. Um, and so I got some small wins in those kinds of things, but generally I was following conventional wisdom of what I should do to help my retirement savings grow. Um, things shifted for me in 2008. Now, a couple of things happened. One, in 2007, I got my first invitation from HP to retire early and leave the company. And I thought about it, I investigated, but I didn't know what I was going to do next. I didn't know how I was going to build an income or, or take care of my family. And at that point in time, um, the first of our four sons was in college and three more were coming along. So sustaining income was critical for me. So I, I declined the offer and found a way to stay and continue to contribute at HP for the next five years. But by 2012, I received the second offer to leave. And I chose to leave because of it was a one, I needed to go. I needed to learn a different path. Um, and I needed to be more available to help take care of my family. So about 2008, we also had a significant decline. And so I started reading and trying to study and figure out what to do to become better in managing finances and learn about trading. Um, so I was reading everything I could. I started taking the self-study courses through the Vance Tharp Institute. And then once I left HP, I became a hacker. I thought I knew what to do uh, I, from all the things I'd been reading and learning. I thought that uh, intellectual awareness, academic knowledge um, would make a difference for me. And so I began to try to apply it. Uh, what I experienced through all of these were a set of setbacks. So the 
decline in 2000 to 2002 was a significant setback for what I experienced. The decline in 2008 and 2009 was a smaller decline. I did a few things that helped me out, but still had a significant emotional impact on my psyche about, well, where are we? How are we managing things as a country? The amount of debt we were taking on. How was the Fed doing things? And I really began to develop a lot of reactivity, a lot of fear of failure, of what could go wrong. Um, following convention, but needing control, needing to be right, thinking I knew what was going on. And all those just kept making it harder and harder for me to trade effectively. So a new starting point, as Ken would draw a bar, a new day. Here's, here's where we are now um, and what's coming. So the opportunity to begin pursuing mastery came to me in September 2019 when I attended a day trading course through VTI uh, taught by Ken. Uh, and from that day forward, I've been reducing my reactivity, reducing my fear, growing my creativity and curiosity, accelerating my learning and growth and accountability. So that was a major shift for me. Let me give you a little more context. So from an equity curve perspective, you can see in the dabbler, my equity curve took a significant decline in the 2000-2002 loss, which really affected my psyche. I kind of struggled through it in the, okay, the idea is you buy and hold. Um, and I had a long-term investment horizon. Um, I was fortunate to get significant growth in that period not so much because of my buy and hold strategies, but more because I'd been given some options that were worth zero by 2002 and had a significant regain um, to a better place by 2007. And what I learned from the Enron disaster is don't have all your eggs in your company basket because that could be a major problem. So I started to move my portfolio away. And uh, fortunately, before the worst of the decline in 2008, I had moved things into more of a stable uh, fund rather than a, a growth fund. So I reduced my decline. Um, as I became more and more obsessed with learning about the market, um, I was switching and so didn't get as good a rebound. Um, in that 2008 to 2012. And then when I left HP and now was trying to figure out how I could generate income and grow capital, I realized I didn't have what I needed. Um, what I was doing was trying to apply academic learning. And what I didn't have was practical knowledge. And that was a very painful way of gaining practical, the uh, just the understanding that I didn't have practical knowledge, and I took a significant decline. Since I've started into the practical learning, I've really been leveraging what Ken talks about as the intersection between science, art, and craft knowledge, craft learning. And that has been a significant shift for me to realize, okay, Here's an academic theory, thought. Now, how do I test that? How do I experiment with it? How do I experiment with it in a small, small enough size that I can be safe? I'm not going to really take these huge declines ever again. Uh, so experimenting and turning my path to more of experimentation, experimentation learning and growth building a core set of practices has been really instrumental in the shift for me. Now, with this path toward mastery, I'm, I'm just beginning. I've small steps. As I talked about, the first step was with Ken in the day trading course in September 2019. The second step was during the de rapid decline with the COVID uh, pandemic coming on, I was participating in the nightly 
webcast that Ken was doing. And a few times I was part of the bar by bar trading where we'd frame trades one bar at a time. He'd, he'd guide us through and coach us. Okay, what are you going to do now? Are you going to enter here? Are you going to exit there? What's your trade frame for this? Um, where are your stops going to be? Where would you stop and reverse? So the whole practical craft, I got to experience that both participating a little bit and watching the others who were doing it um, and, and learning through that process. In the fall, I went through the foundations course that he had put into an a online learning system. Uh, I then also started to begin to participate in the true storytelling circle that he began. Um, and that has made an incredible difference in just helping me see what my stories are and how I can change those stories. Uh, another breakthrough for me was establishing an accountability partnership with Joe. And J Joe has been uh, just a critical part of my learning journey uh, from that point forward. Um, and we've gone through many iterations uh, of how we think about this and how we help each other. I'll share a couple more thoughts on that as, as we get to the next steps here. Um, but that, the, in uh, the beginning of last year, 2022, Joe and I applied one of the Creativity 202 exercises, the bar by tra trading of each other's system. And what really worked for us in this was not so much the system definition, but but, but going bar by bar and saying, okay, Joe, I'm going to trade what you're telling me. Here's this bar. What are you telling me to do? Okay, I'll do that. And then we'll go forward and and vice versa. He was trading and saying, okay, Tom, I got this bar. What do you want me to do? Uh, uh, what's your pattern? What's your frame? What what are what do you enter? Do you exit? What do you do? Um, and, and how do we move forward? And just doing that was a critical practice that made a significant difference for me in the rest of 2022. Um, and then in June 2022, I started into the weekly creativity course 2000 uh, or 202. Um, and so here are some of the highlights from that. Uh, Lesson two, just that war's greatest unknown is, is fog and fiction. The, a lot of unknowns, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of stories and narratives and plans made up about what it would be, and it's not. Um, so what's critical from that is establishing a trade log to learn and having the plan, prepare, execute, and assess process. And building that into my practice has been a, a core transition for me. I'm not done. I'm just beginning. Um, there are things I'm improving in my trade log to start 2023 uh, that I didn't do in 2022 that will help me become better and a more regular plan, prepare, execute, assess process. Lesson 11 was what I talked about in the, the plunge into the unknown, the partner system trading, doing that with Joe made a significant difference. A third key highlight was uh, that when we got to lesson 23, where it was trying to blend and put things together and really um, integrate and see what's going on, which got me into assessing my trade log in a very different way and beginning to explore the sensitivity of large trades. And I'll show you that in a few slides. The next one was uh, lesson 27, honing creativity into innovation. How do we really get focused on executing uh, what we're imagining might be possible. How do we do that in a clear, consistent way, taking on a sniper mentality? And uh, um, my assessment says, I have a lot of room to go there. And that's what I'll get to that in a minute. And finally, the, the last lesson that I completed earlier today was high performance creativity, and really how to use a trade frame to help see what's going on, recognize what's there, 
from a more objective state so that I move my reactions from being subject to what's happening in the moment to reflecting on the trade frame and seeing where the trades are in the frame as a way to disassociate and be more objective and see the trade more objectively than my impulsive reactions would lead me to. So I heartily recommend participating in the Creativity 202 course with a cohort sharing thoughts and ideas, incredibly beneficial. So one outcome of that in the last week or two can put together a, a professional assessment of 74 things on the path to mastery to be a professional in trading. And uh, put a, this last week, he put out a spreadsheet um, and I've gone through and kind of assessed what constitutes a, an 80 on a scale of zero to 100 from what I know now about me, about the systems I'm up adapting from Ken and about the market. And uh, my top five opportunities that I'm going to be working on this year. First is having a clear, simple, robust strategy and system that's documented. Um, I have so, a lot of thoughts. I've started into it, but I don't have it done yet as a first pass. So number one opportunity. Number two and I'll show you some statistics from this last year, is cutting losses, exiting quickly when a position's not working, and eliminating the XSR loss, which I've started to measure this past fall, of how many R am I giving back beyond a 1R loss? Uh, and how can I reduce that to zero XSR give back? I had two months where I didn't give back XSR last year. So huge opportunity to improve this next year. Third is impulse control. So being able to se easily separate the impulses I feel, my monkey wanting to get into action from actually considering what my choices are and making effective choices and making sure that I do that uh, well. And my impulse control is, is not where I need it to be. And so opportunity. The fourth is the my reset button in zero state. We all get knocked off balance. And I learned that very much in my Aikido practice. I always get knocked off balance. It's how quickly and easily can I return back to a centered, grounded zero state. And so more opportunity every time I trade, every day I practice, I get to practice my reset and coming back to zero state. And then fifth is prudent, rational risk-taking versus gambling. So I've set some parameters for myself of a max position risk of 1R, and I didn't follow that. Um, I set my goal of a max day risk of 4R, that I wouldn't ever take losses greater than that, and I'd stop. Well, I didn't do that um, because I was hoping for different outcomes and not managing my impulse to, uh, to, to, and saying, no, that's where I'm going to exit. And um, having a max open risk, uh, no greater than 4% of my capital. So in the blended monthly rebalancing, if I take a 10% and have 20% of my capital in blended monthly rebalancing, that's already 2% at risk as a trailing stop. So how do I always know where I am? Um, and uh, lots of opportunity to improve. So on average, across all 74, I came up with an average of 64, which is in the novice realm, which is really where I think I am. I'm just beginning to figure out how to put all these pieces together uh, and put them into practice. And I only have 49 of the 49% of the 74 at an 80 or above. So I've got a lot of room to move things up. And that's what I'm excited about going forward is I have a much better sense of where I am. I have a much better sense of the journey I'm on. I have clarity on the things I need to work on. And that is giving me much greater confidence in my ability to get there. And that's a very dramatic shift from where I was when I was a hacker.
or obsessing in, in a fearful state. So 2022, a year I experimented with a lot of things. I experimented with day and swing trading with many different time frames from a day trading perspective and from a, a swing trading perspective. I experimented with different position sizes and scaling in choices to positions. I exper experimented with long and short. Um, and the ones underlined, the three 10 minute and 30 minute were better time frames for me. Not the one minute, not the five minute. Uh, that may change as I get better at managing my risk. Um, I have a very clear short bias. I made more most of my gains on the short side, which this year, um, with much of the year being in a bear market, um, but other opportunities. I missed the long rebounds that occurred in July and October. So my top four improvement opportunities from a actual trade perspective is number one, eliminate the excess R losses, those that are greater than a one R loss. Number two, I do have that short bias and I missed long opportunity swing opportunities in the rebounds that occurred. Uh, number three is I would give back too much when a move was done. I would be hoping, again, hope, not managing my trade frame, I would be hoping it would find support and go again, and I'd give back more than I wanted to. Instead of exiting at a clear, effective exit point, and then if it did find support and rebound, getting back in. So this is where managing position size and risk is, is important. So for me, position size, since I've not managed, I'm do not have margin on my accounts. I need to manage the cash closure cycle. So I've got to manage how much capital I have available to trade in a given day. And I need to manage my position size for what's appropriate for what's going on in the market and uh, how much volatility there is and how much I can manage and manage my risk well. And I need to do that far better than I did this last year. So let's look at some numbers and what, what that actually looks like. So here's my day trading stats at about 2,300 trades. Uh, my max trade was 12R. My minimum was minus 27. So did not cut that loss well. Um, overall, looking at this, my ratio of wins to losses, close to even. Um, and my ratio of, of win, average win, and average loss gave me a positive net expectancy and generated positive R for me this year, which generated some income for me. That was useful, a good start, and still in the novice stage of managing this well, um, not managing it as a professional yet. And I know steps to take. My swing trade, similar. Um, this much smaller set of trades, 120 or so, um, a max of 85. So here, here's where um, a large position size on a significant move achieved a pretty significant gain. An excess gain, I'd say. Um, not one I can expect ever again. Um, so needing to manage position size more effectively. Again, not cutting losses. So the minus almost 18 and an average loss of minus four. So significant opportunity to improve this system as well. And it did contribute to growth of capital for me this year in a significant way. Lots of learning from this experimentation. And what was critical was having a good log that can be made better and doing a, a clear assessment of what was going on, including understanding what did I do that led to those unprofessional losses of greater than one off. So here's the modeling that came from the blender exercise, the sensitivity of large trades. So if I just take my day trade stats as they were, and I capped all the wins to 4R, nothing larger than 4R. So 
just reduced the amount I got on anything above 4R four, four to 4R four and reduced the losses. Um, so anything greater than a 1R loss became a 1R loss. And just as a way to mentally help me see what would that do? Um, and as you can see, it makes a significant difference, uh, two and a half times uh, improvement in the overall R generated if I had executed that way. And the system quality number goes up by almost four times. So just having that helps make it really clear to me what I need to do differently. Again, one of the benefits of the Creativity 202 course that I wouldn't have gotten to as quickly without that and my accountability partner helping me look at what's really going on in my trading. So what gets in the way? Well, there are eight human biases I've learned that get in the way of cutting losses. And these come from quit, the power of knowing when to walk away. So I want you to think back to that tree uh, that I shared about me to begin with. So one of the core values that I learned from my grandparents, my parents, was don't quit. Just persevere. Keep on holding on and find a way. That doesn't work in holding losing positions. I needed to realize that part of this is my lifetime of learning about don't quit actually gets in my way of cutting losses and saying, okay, let me restart. Let me start from a fresh trade frame. And that is very powerful. So what gets in the way of quitting? Here are eight things that Annie identifies. And she also shares some ways to, to get past this and make it be better. But first is quitting on time usually feels like quitting too early. And boy, do I experience that in a trade when I say, well, I want to move up to break even plus, uh, break even plus dinner for two quickly, but that might cause me to get out of the trade too early. Well, that's exactly this first one. I need to just move it. My fireman thinks it needs to go to break even plus dinner for two, move it. And if I get out, okay, I get to get back in and I get to manage my capital appropriately so I have the capacity to get back in. But uh, don't worry about my, my, my wake up call is, okay, it feels like quitting too early. So be prepared to get back in, but don't not get out because um, that hurts me more. The second is loss aversion happens to all humans. When we are in the losses, we take on more risk and we want to keep going, hoping we can avoid ever having to realize the loss. That is the biggest cause of my excess our losses. I went to hope that it would turn around and become a winning trade. The next thing adds to it, and I did this a lot too, when we're in the losses, not only are we likely to hold on to it, but to double down, saying, well, this is where support is, so I'll add cost average, dollar cost averaging, conventional way of doing things. Uh, no, it actually makes uh, the escalation of commitment stronger and stronger and uh, takes bigger losses. That's how I got to minus 26, minus 18. Um, and then the sunk cost effect adds to this, where it, it causes us to think we should stick with situations because, well, I've already got that much capital associated with it. Why would I want to get out and not have that capital available to get back in? Um, sunk cost, I might as well just hold because it's going to turn around. No, doesn't work. Um, it actually leads to worse outcomes is what I've been learning. The next one, the endowment effect, where we value what we own more than we would if we did know it. And that includes not just trade positions. That includes our ideas about trading and about ourselves, our beliefs about what's going on. And we prefer to stick and hold than change. 
not good, um, has been my experience. And then when it comes to quitting, this gets to our identity, the belief that I'm a good person, the belief that I'm learning about trading, and I should, a judgment word, should be better at this. And I've learned a lot, so I should know what's going to happen when really I have no idea of knowing what's going to happen. And my thinking that I know is a delusion, an illusion in my mind, deluding me that hold on to a position. And I got to quit that and realize that's not who I am. That's just a pattern of thinking that's getting in my way. And I can shift that pattern of thinking. So optimism. Optimism and thinking I'll be successful actually gets in my way um, because it's deluding me. Instead of thinking, no, I mean, the best I achieved this last year on day trades was a 50-50. One win, one loss, one win, one loss, 10 losses, five wins. But it averaged out to one win, one loss. So being optimistic about what the trade would do getting in my way of being objective. And finally, goals, while they can be really useful, having a goal, a direction I want to go in, it can also increase the chance that I'll escalate commitment when I should quit. So how did I had, take losses more than four hours in a day? Well, I had a goal. I wanted to get two hours in a day. And if I was down four hours and I thought there was still possible that I could get back to closer to even, or if I was down two R and I could get back to plus one R, or if I was flat and thought I could get to two R, I kept trying to persevere to achieve the goal, even when, when looking at the market, my experience, it might've been a shrinking doji kind of day. When it, the opportunity really didn't exist, but I was trying to force something to meet a goal. Didn't work. So these, I've experienced all of these biases. These are things that now, because of thanks to Annie, I have a better sense of what gets in my way of doing what I need to do as a professional, uh, on the path to being a professional trader is cut those losses. So back to my biggest challenge managing me. I'm, I'm a complex adaptive biological organism. Um, I'm just beginning to learn what it is in me that keeps me from adapting and applying Ken's teaching and being able to effectively dance with the markets and uh, go with the market and then step aside when the market's going a direction I'm not ready to go in. So the things that are making a huge difference are following the path to professional mastery and having that laid out by Kent, the 74 things I could do. The community of practice, the tortoise community that he provides, the accountability partnership I have with Joe, coaching that's available from people in the community. Um, Glenn uh, helped me begin to see some of the things that I've talked about. Um, creativity practices from the Creativity 202 course, and I'm still not finished with the first time through, and we'll be going back through it again and again. And mind shift, the mindset changes. So I'll leave you the, this is probably the underlying thing for me that's making a, a critical part of this, is it's not just about picking up a few pointers. It's about seeing things in a new way. And when we change to a growth mindset, we let go of judging and being judged and start to focus on how do I learn and how do I help others learn? And our commitment becomes more to growth, to progress than exactly what are I'm making in this trade. I want to manage it well. I want to grow. I want to learn. Um, and whatever our, it turns out to be, okay, that's what it turns out to be. So making this mindset shift and focusing on my words to say, well, some words are judgment. I should is a judgment. And how do I get to what do I actually see 
And how can I change what I'm doing in a more objective way? That's what's helping me with this community of support to become, uh, take further steps on the path to mastery. I hope this has raised a few things you might consider, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. Thank you.